Hi, everybody. It's a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to go a little deeper into the three jinns, particularly Ming Jin and An Jin, and, uh, and think about it in the context of insubstantial and substantial. So it sounds like a lot of, a lot of noise there, but bear with me. So we talk about Ming Jin, and that means the a form that we do to as a uh, as a demonstration, as a something which shows what exactly is going on there. So it's it's very it has um, uh, it has substance. You you look at it and you say, oh yeah, I I know what that thing is is meant to do. It it shows you what it's all about, and in in Ming. Jin, we are going from physicality for actually doing something physical to to transmute that into energy or chi, and then for anjin, that's a, a different level and that's more insubstantial, and that is means it is there's less there. It's hidden. It's a uh, it's something where we. There's a suggestion in the form of what's going on, uh, but it's not doesn't look quite as sturdy as the uh, as the Ming does. The third category, the third gen is Hua Jin, which is we get we're not actually going to play with that tonight too much, and that's where we move beyond those and into the mystery. Into we're actually going from. Instead of going from the substan the, the physicality to chi and then chi to spirit, we're going from spirit to emptiness. We're kind of dissolving everything. And it's kind of implied in, in what we're going to talk about here because it's all on a spectrum of substantiality and insubstantiality. So when we talk about substantial, we mean something has substance. And in very practical terms, that means that it has a certain level of, of fixity, density, uh, solidity. And we think, you know, like say my, uh, my head, you know, there is, a, there is a substantial part there, which is the bones, the, in, uh, the cranial bones there that, uh, that, you know, make up the shape of my head. You know, whereas there's a certain amount of energy that is animating my head, and that is a good deal less substantial than the than the, the cranial bones themselves. So there's different levels there, and then you can say that oh, the thoughts that are behind the chi are even more insubstantial than the energy itself, and it keeps going deeper, deeper, deeper until we move into a category where it's like there's it's more nothing than something. And that's the direction we are moving when we move in the direction of insubstantiality. There is less substance there that to to pin down, to name, to to create a thing out of. And so we look at it, and let's say a, a parallel would be say the a black hole, which is this incredibly powerful phenomenon, ast astronomical phenomenon, where stars are imploding in on themselves and they're, they're sucking everything in there with them. So there is, when you go to a black hole, there's no substance can survive in the presence of a black hole. It's just everything, including the light, gets sucked down in. And so it's a complete absence of, of stuff, uh, but it's incredibly powerful. What makes it powerful is the, its absence, is the emptiness that is, is, that is there, that it goes there. You can't have a thing in its presence because it just kind of sucks it in. So the, uh, when we're doing our forms, when we're moving in, toward these insubstantial aspects of our forms, we are moving in the direction of that. We're moving in the direction of 
of insubstantial and attracting the energy of, of the universe, attracting the energy and taking it in. And so that, um, but we do that by, by becoming less, less stuff and more non-stuff, at least in our way of approaching it. So the, in the Ming, it's, uh, we're saying, no, no, we're going to, we're going to have some stuff here. This arm is going to be, it's going to be solid. It's going to, even though the, the muscles are relaxed, there's still this sinew and bone and blood and, and everything that's there so that I can, I can count on, I can label, I can, I can point to, and that's the substantial aspect. But there's also, as I dissolve that, in, at least in my mind, and associate primarily with the insubstantial aspect, then I'm attracting the energy and allowing that to go through the through my system. I become energized by the uh, by that association. So this will sound uh, be a whole lot more fun in practice than uh, than me talking about it. Um, so we're going to we're going to play around with with a with a meditation that just to explore that the what that that means and we're going to put it into a couple of tai chi forms that uh, we're going to do and uh, those of you checking in uh, and you don't know these forms that's okay just follow along the best you can the important thing is not in knowing the choreography of the form it's about getting the idea here of of substantial and insubstantial in these in these in these two things. Okay, so why don't you stand up and let's uh, take a look at that. Okay, let's just step out on a hip width. And first thing we want to do is establish our three pillars. So what are we doing here? We're establishing our substantiality, creating a vessel or a conduit for the energy to move through. So we're creating a structure that allows the energy to move as efficiently as possible. So we, to do this, we're going to First, go into the balls of the feet and just kind of feel into that, settle into that. Your whole body is sinking down and the weight is spread throughout the whole foot, but we're orienting to the ball of the foot. Feel your toes as they lightly touch the ground. Feel your heel. Everything's centered around the, the ball of the foot. When I talk about the ball of the foot, we're talking about the along the big toe line, the on the inside of the, the medial line of the foot. And uh, so it's where the big bones are, and that's where we want the the, the load to be taken into the body. Reach with the now reach with the crown of the head. So that you're tucking in your chin and opening the jade pillow gate at the base of your skull. And what this does is it raises the spirit of vitality, allows that to go into your brain, into the the center of the brain, what the Taoists call the spiritual, the spirit valley. And we're loading up the, directing the energy just by our structure, allowing it to go, basically go home. So the spirit is allowed to go home. And then relax your lower back, allow your tailbone to drop. 
reach out a little bit with your elbows. So you're opening your shoulder joints. Arms are slightly rounded, but very relaxed. You just feel in your hands, your fingers feel the pulsing and ting tingling there. And just allow your hips to relax and turn this and loosen up those hip joints. So you allow yourself to sink down into your hips, into the hip joints, into your quad. Imagine a, a thread pulling up from the uh, your clavicular notch here, right at the, the base of your neck, the base of your throat. Like you're pulling up and allowing your shoulders and your chest to open. Everything just kind of sinking down, except that crown point reaching up. So we're, what we're doing here is we're opening up to the big chi, the yin chi of the earth, the yang chi of the heavens. Bend to the balls of your feet and reach with your wrists, relax your shoulders. Fingers are relaxed and hanging. Reach out. Extend your fingers, reach out and open your back. So here we're very substantial. This would be, we call this a Ming kind of motion here. That is we're being very pronounced in our movements. Everything very open and obvious. Now, rotate your forearms and separate, reach and expand. And really extend out. Feel the tug on your connective tissue. Things feel the sinews being being stretched a little bit as you do that. And this activates the tensegrity of your connective tissue system. So we think about this. This is this is a very substantial thing. It's like. Uh, like tuning a guitar whenever you say this we're doing this we're tuning the guitar to to like a, a note an e note and and there's the, the guitar string is stretched to the exact right sweet spot that allows us to have the 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 frequency the frequency that we want so the energy gets into that exact frequency and we feel that the energy radiating throughout the whole body because we're doing it by creating this, these poles in opposition, our hands, and we're lengthening the sinews and allowing that to create this tensegrity or uh, throughout the uh, throughout the whole body. This allows the energy to move much more freely. Very obviously, it's a very substantial energy. Rotate your forearms and sink into your heels and press down. Just do that very slowly and feel the resistance of the air as you press down the space. Feel it just there's like you're pressing down in a swimming pool. You're feeling the resistance of the water. And then your arms by your sides and just feel into that, feel into the substantiality of this posture. We've loaded it up and there's a lot of chi there. We've trans transmuted our physicality into chi. And just stand there for a, a, a moment. 
and just feel into that and get accustomed to that, that feeling. Now we let go of that, sink into your heels, and relax. Go to the ball of your feet. This time, we're going to do it very soft. And if we were tuned that guitar string to E before we're going to drop it down to say C. So it's still, we're still tuning it, but it's going to be the tensegrity of the structure is going to be less. Things aren't going to be pulled quite as taut, and it's going to be a different kind of energy. It's going to be more insubstantial energy, but that permits us to explore a different quality of the energy. And now reach with your wrist, go to the balls of your feet, reach with the wrist, very relaxed. And more empty than full. So whereas before we had the, the sins are really nice and, and snug there, this is gonna be a lot looser. Reach with your fingers. So the, we're not depending so much on the tensegrity to do the work for it this time. We're emptying out and creating less shape there, less solidity. Now rotate the forearms and reach out, but only going out halfway. And just feel the heaviness of your arms. And very little effort going into this. And in this, you're becoming a black hole. You're attracting the chi. You're holding that position and just allowing the energy to fill you up. Very soft, yet very full. Moving into the heels, rotate your forearms. Press down. Emptying out, feel the energy going down, flushing down through your feet, emptying out, feel it running through you. You're becoming less and less substantial and more and more Chi moving into, into spirit, into Shen. Notice a different quality of the energy now. Even though it's just as full, it feels different than the more substantial energy of the, of the main. This is the on. And in, we're standing here in stillness, which is really appreciate that uh, the transformation that's occurring in the body mind as we 
embrace this this more insubstantial quality. Let's step in and take a deep breath. And exhale. And let go even more. You know yourself getting very weak. So when we're in this on state, there's a feeling of weakness. As we let go of our dependence on the substantiality to do the work. And we become more like that black hole where we, our power is magnified considerably as we throw away our substantiality. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to take these two qualities and we're going to do a Tai Chi form. Uh, we're going to do the Yang Ching Fu's 13 original postures. And if you're just checking the video out, checking this video out for the first time and you don't know this form, that's okay. Follow along as best you can. We covered the whole form in a, in a series of of uh, classes a couple of months ago. So you can check back on those and if you want to learn the form. The most important, you just want to follow along and feel into it. So I'm going to uh, turn my back to you. I'm going to continue to talk as I, as I do that. We're going to start off by doing it as Ming. We're going to get very substantial, very big. And this is sort of a classical way of, of doing this form. And then we'll empty that out and we'll do it again, that time with more on, more insubstantial. So uh, I went to uh, turn my back to you and Okay, the first thing we want to do is you want to really empty out and we start in a Wu Chi that is sort of a potentiality but zero manifestation. We're like letting go of all kinds of stuff and we're going to go from the Wu Chi to the Tai Chi, which is we become unified or state of wholeness. So begin, really empty out. Let go of, of your thoughts. You want to feel like, feel the, the gap between thoughts. And begin. So you're stepping out with your left foot. Sink. This is very big. The balls of your feet. Okay, they open up and reach with your wrists, your fingers. Open your back. Sink of your heels and press down. Feel the tensegrity in your body. Feel the joints opening, creating more space. Take in your left foot and then turn. Breathe with your right hand. Really open up, open up the joints, open up. Feel that lengthening of the sinew. Reach down with your left hand. Feel that tensegrity there. Sink in your right foot and turn. Okay, so 
Good to ball the right foot and reach and open. Really lengthen your arms. Feel yourself extending and separating out the joints. Think of your left foot and turn. And reach, open. Reach up with the crown of your head. Really feel the jade pillow gate opening up as you do that. Sit so in your right foot and turn. Reach and open. Sink down into your right. Walk. Pick up your left heel and step out. Really establish a firm foundation there. You're loading up that right leg. But we're going to let that go now as we sink into the left and turn. The left becomes substantial. And reach, step in. And sink into the right leg and turn. Reach your right hand, uh, ear height, your wrist. Sink into your right foot, spiral down, and then step out and reach and sink. Really sink into that left, left leg, left claw. Your back leg is almost straight, and you're reaching out with that right arm, right wrist. And then spiral down, reach up with the right hand, step in with the right foot, and spiral down to the left, and open. Fist under elbow, reaching out, reaching up, your spine is straight, feel your central equilibrium. Spiral down and step. Load up your left leg, reach, turn, open, open, and step in. And white crane spreads wings, nice and big. Very Ming, turn, reaching down, reach with your left hand, extend. Think of your right, step out with the left foot and turn and brush knee twist step. Feel that back leg almost straight. You're, you're heavily into that, the left claw. You're really feeling the support of your left leg. Your body is, is slanted. Reach with your left hand. Turn and play guitar. Take and turn, reach out. Feel that extension. Step up and reach with your fingers. Very substantial, very pronounced, obvious, pivot. Sink in your right, reach up with your left hand, push down with your right and sink down. Really load up and then spiral onto the left. Right fist comes up, step in with your right foot and then step out and strike with back fist. Left hand circles up, right hand circles around, and punch. Again, you wanna have that left leg about, you know, kind of straight, your body sloped, pivot on your left heel, left hand comes down, reach up with the left hand, step in, the right foot, right fist comes up, step and back with back fist. Your 
pivot on your right heel. Look around. Step up with your left foot, step out and punch. Left hand circles, right hand circles around to the side, pivot. You can do left, step up and think of your right foot and ward off with the right arm. Really open up, open up your back. Feel the connection all the way through. Step back. Step back. Okay. Turn. Sink into your left and roll back. Big. Sink into your right and press. Your left, pushing down, stick it your right and push. With your left, turn, pivot on your right heel, open, spread your arms, step back with your left foot and sink. Gather and cross hands, reach with your elbows, reach with your wrists, reach with the crown of your head. Feel that young expansion. You feel the substantiality of this and then open. And sink in your heels, reach down with your elbows, down with your wrists. Feel the substantiality of the yin. The energy is going down, 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 but it's still very, very substantial, very solid, full. And spiral down to the right, step in with the left foot and take a deep breath. Press down. Empty out, throw that all away. And just hang out there for a moment. And when you're doing this at home, we're not gonna do it now, but recommend that however long it takes you to get through the form, let's say five minutes, spend five minutes just standing and just allowing the energy to circulate, to heal your body, to nourish your internal organs. You know how we've taken the physicality of the posture or the form and use that to transmute into chi. And Okay, so now let's do it, same form, but we'll do it as Anjin, insubstantial. So the whole idea here is we are black holes. We're sucking the chi in and moving toward more insubstantiality, more Chen, more spirit letting go of stuff so and like before i said you you want to feel like you're weak like your your body is is you you've lost that robust quality 
that we just explored in the substantial form. And now we're going to go in the opposite direction. And by becoming weak, we're going to attract the energy of the universe. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do that one. So really empty out. Wu Chi. And begin. Really soft. Weak. Come up. But weakly. Reach with the fingers. Let's come down, sink into your heels. Very softly reach and turn. Nice and slow, very soft. Pause here a moment, just feel into this, the lightness of this posture. And continue. Pause here, it's play guitar. And just see what you can let go of. And feel yourself attracting the energy. Feel the lightness of it. Continue. Image. 
Let me pause here. Continue. I was there for a moment. Separate, sink into your heels and let go. Step in, deep breath. And just trim the chi. And throw it away. Move to even greater insubstantiality. Great. Please take a seat. Okay. Mm. One thing I really want to emphasize, and and that is that neither of those is is better than the other, or more important than the other. They're both two aspects, two sides of the same coin, and one is 
becoming stuff and the other one is dissolving stuff and that's that's a the a pulsing there that occurs between them and they nurture and support each other that the more insubstantial become the more we can then turn around and take that and produce more substantiality and vice versa. So how'd that go? Good, good. Okay. Any thoughts, questions? Sharon? Just an observation for myself. Um, I understand I'm always supposed to be paying attention to the Dantian. In this exercise, when I really focused there, I became so much uh, more insubstantial with ease. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So can you explain uh, when you focus there, what, what, what did you do? Feel. Feel my Dantian. You feel, you feel just, your Dantian. Just, just feel the Dantian and... Um, reminding myself that that leads everything and all movement is from there and I'm only going to go as far as my Dantian goes as a far as opposed to perhaps twisting a little more or reaching a little further I'm more contained and soft when I just feel my Dantian great Cool, thank you. Any other uh, thoughts, questions? Scott? Uh, I will say that feeling feeling weak while standing was, I got that pretty, pretty well, but trying to feel weak and moving at the same time seems to be a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they don't seem to go together. Yeah. So the, the, there, there it is, the, the, the paradox, because our, we're focusing on the weakness, we're focusing on the emptiness, but it's not an absolute, because otherwise we couldn't stand up. Otherwise, you know, we couldn't move. So, so there is, it's all relative to something else, you know, and so we, uh, uh, we are, and that's, I guess, we're, Cultivating the Ming as well as the as the An is where that comes in. When we become so substantial that we can let go of our substantiality, yet still have a form, still have a shape, a structure that we can depend on to get the job done. And that's uh, so. I think that's where those two are are uh, inextricably intertwined. Richard, you're on uh, mute. Um, I'm, I'm, th I'm thinking that um, substantial, substan in the substantial part, I'm moving. In the insubstantial part, I'm being moved. I don't know if that makes any sense, but uh, sure, sure. That's certainly a way of thinking about it, and uh, I think as an image, it it's I think it's 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 helpful to think of it that way. That is, you're you're like a cloud that's being blown in the breeze, kind of a thing, and and uh, uh, just as the same with the with the last one. Even if it's not entirely true, right? So it, it, it's good a for me. <laughs> useful thing, useful thing to think about, right? And right. Do it. Like you might know, say, you know, wag your tail. You know, that's an image. That's an idea that right. uh, is uh, it. It helps us cultivate a certain way of moving, a certain way of uh, of dealing with energy. But I'm getting a a uh, hand here I from the. I just Producer. thought it's like you are both the cloud and the breeze. 
You're both the cloud and the breeze. I like it. I like it. Yes. So, <laughs> so yes, you're being Good. moved, but you're moving and you're being moved simultaneously. You're the cloud and the breeze. So, uh, yes. And so we empty out and dissolve our substantiality, but we still have a form. We're still doing something. And uh, consequently, there's, uh, you know, there is some element there. So we just, what we've done is we change the ratio of substantiality to insubstantiality, at least in our consciousness, in our, our, our mind intent. If that makes sense. Jonathan. I think at some point you said, take out the tense integrity or don't emphasize it. Did I hear you right? Yeah. It, which is interesting because it's like, uh, I have a feeling you never want us to totally leave tensegrity, but there's, it's almost like taking the tense out of tensegrity or something. <laughs> like that very intentional structure, you can overdo the sense of kind of putting something into it, I guess, and maintaining and creating it. And you somehow want us to sort of feel it without so much, you know, doing or something? Or tell me what you mean. Yeah, well, uh, the image I, I, I tried to use, I. I don't know how successful that was, but like tuning down your guitar, you know, yeah. if you're tuning that string to E, you know, it's you know, a step and a half higher than than if you tune it down to C. So right. it's a slacker string, Slackening. but it's still yeah. it's still producing a tone. It's still producing the tone right. that you want from that more relaxed. It's a different quality of energy than right. you know, than with the with the the tighter uh, string. Both are useful, both are good, both are desirable, depending on the context of of uh, what it is you're trying to do. No, it's a good amount. It's a good metaphor to play with. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that when you first said it. Huh. So, so, yeah, okay, yeah. So, I'm, my arm is, is less <laughs> taut, you know, now. And that is a, a different quality of energy than if I'm, uh, you know, it's reaching and, and extended and, yeah. So there's, there's two very different qualities of uh, expression of energy. And, and, and I guess that comes down to that. So with the Ming, it's expression of energy. And, and with the An, it's more absorption. It's attraction of energy. Maybe it's like feeling, instead of feeling the tensegrity, you're feeling the integrity. Uh, yeah, okay. Instead of feeling the tensegrity, you're feeling, you're more feeling the integrity that is the wholeness, the, uh, you're, right. you're attuning, attuning to, you know, it's a, it as it is, rather than saying, oh, I'm going to make it into something more. And yeah, I mean, it comes to a point, you have so many levels you can tune it down to until it be, doesn't make a sound and then, or it's broken or whatever. But right. you can pluck a string and make no sound at all, but then we've lost it. That's, we're ne we don't want to get there. We want to get, at, we can experiment with the lowest level, we're still making a sound and have, I think, what you're talking about. Right. So there's a real so, range. So then we get into the Hua Jin, whenever we get there, we, we feel like we've moved almost that we've almost disappeared when we're at that level that's like you know where you're just standing still yet all things are done you know it's um you're you're uh, it's the, like the ultimate in wu wei at that yeah. point yeah. and uh so all those are different qualities and they're all applicable in different situations and uh, as uh practitioners I believe that I want to be familiar with all of them. I yeah. want my vocabulary to include, mm -hmm. you know, all three levels and all local stops along the way. Mm -hmm. You know, those are those are the express stations, but I also want to see, you know, check out, you know, all the in-between stations as well. Yeah, Scott. Um, <clears throat> just real quick, uh, when you're doing that with your arm, it made me realize that that's, Another thing you can do a hundred times a day is just right. I was doing it. I was doing it while we were talking, and it's really easy to 
to reach and then just let it go and it's and because we use our arms all the time right so it's it's easy that that, yeah. that, that that that's brilliant scott so yeah we you okay i'm going to do this right i'm going to get very mean right and then i'm going to do it and ah and much less you know just and receive so express receive and be able to and be able to shift gears instantly, be able to go back and forth between the two and and uh, with 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 no hesitation. So that's a great great idea, Scott. There to just to get that familiarity with with that particular aspect of your being, that your ability to control energy and to control your body, so that you can uh, you say, okay, I'm I'm given and I'm receiving and be able to shift back and forth. Cool. Valerie. Uh, <clears throat> well, when we started um, with the Ming Jin, I realized I'd spent so many years of my Taiji life uh, being in the Ming. And for the last, I don't know how many years, focusing unbeknownst to me on the An Jin that it was a little difficult going into the Ming Jin. Ming Jin. It was um, hard to reach further just because I've been training myself to get softer and softer. Right. So, um, and, you know, it's very beneficial of you saying that, you know, we need both sides of the coin. You know, you can't always walk that fine line. Um, or at least I, I see the benefit of not always walking up and recognizing, recognizing both sides. Yes, because we, whenever we're into expressing, we're going to get we're going to get physically stronger. The structure that we have, we inhabit is going to be more powerful so that whenever we let it go. It, we still are powerful, but we're just not expressing it in that moment. And we don't have to express it in that moment. So, and being able to go there and, and be able to do it, either one at will is, is, you know, kind of like what Scott was saying, you practice that over and over and over again, so it just becomes second nature to you. Great. Okay, thank you all so much. Great, co great comments, appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Korea. Thank, thank, thank you, Korea. Korea. Thank you, production team. <laughs> <laughs>